Hi, my name is Lori Griffin Burns and I make children's books. And I'm going to share with you today my very favorite book in the world. And it's not a book that I wrote. It's not even a book that my friends wrote. This is a book that my kids made and I helped um, many years ago now. It is called The Flora and Fauna of Hosmer Street. And this is the only copy of this book that exists in the world. It was created, as I said, by my kids. Ben and Sam, who are twins, were in the sixth grade the year they helped make this book, and their sister Catherine was in the third grade. And that year, we had this really amazing opportunity to uh, travel a little bit with their dad. His job was gonna have him traveling around the country, and we were able to go with him. But that meant they would be in and out of school a lot. And so to avoid that, what we decided to do was add another adventure on top of the traveling adventure, and that was to school at home. So for one year, they didn't go to their regular school. They schooled at home, and I was their teacher. And this was our science project. And it became a really meaningful experience for all of us, and so that's what I thought I'd tell you a little bit about today. So what is the flora and fauna of Hosmer Street? Well, it's a diary, really. We decided that for one year, we would keep a really detailed diary of every creature that lived near us. So at that time, we were living uh, just outside of the second largest city in the state of Massachusetts. So we weren't right in the city, but we weren't really in the country either. Um, and we lived on a property uh, that was about an acre in size, so it was a pretty good size, but we were really lucky because around that was a large forest. And so we explored those places every chance we got with the idea of keeping track of every animal that we could find. And what we agreed to do was to take photographs of all those animals so that we could figure out exactly what they were. And um, also to take photographs of any signs of animals, anything that we thought indicated that maybe an animal that we hadn't seen had actually been on the property. We took pictures of those too. And we compiled them all into this three ring binder and identified them all. And that is really what the flora and fauna of Hosper Street is. So what do we see? Crazy, right? We saw a lot more than we expected to see in our yard, in our own yard. We had lived there for years and we hadn't seen many, many of the things that we saw during this one homeschool year. And what we learned from that was two things. First of all, if you look, you'll see more. It sounds so silly to say, but it's true. If you were to start looking now where you live, either in your yard or in a nearby green space, or in your school playground, really started looking, you'll be surprised. You'll find more things than you think are there. It's a matter of really, really paying attention and also keeping a diary. So consider doing that. The other thing we learned was that, um, that there are patterns in nature we started to realize that certain animals we only saw at certain times. And we've done this um, subsequently for years. We just keep a notebook now recording what we see when. And when you do that, when you pay attention to what animal neighbors are around you, when you see them and when you don't see them, patterns will emerge. 
So when we start to hear the call of the spring peeper, which is a small frog that is very common here, we know it's springtime because frogs begin to call in preparation for mating, which happens in the spring. <laughs> However, we're seeing, uh, say, an adult monarch butterfly, then I know it's not early spring, and it's definitely not winter because those butterflies don't exist here as adults at those times of year. So if I'm seeing a monarch butterfly, then it's summertime because that's when the adult lives here. So these patterns are super interesting and you start to just um, get a feel for them when you pay attention to the animals that live around you all year round. One of my favorite parts of this book is that for me, it's just a collection of really fun stories, really fun memories. Every picture, I can remember when we took it and what was going on, where we were, and often they have funny little stories attached to them or really fascinating things that we learned. And so as one example, I'm gonna show you a photo. I don't know if you'll be able to see what it is. This is a very cool photo. What you're looking at is a twig. So it's a forked twig. Here's a twig that goes back to a branch and then it forks into two little twigs and hanging in between that fork is, um, is that what looked like a nest. We didn't know what was living there. We watched for days. We didn't see any birds come close to it, but it was clearly a structure that was built by some kind of bird. Here's another picture we took of a side view. Um, the, 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 the twigs are up here and this sack is hanging down in between that for those forked twigs. Well, we did some research using some books uh, that we have at home to help with that sort of thing. I'll show you a few of those in a minute. And it turns out that that is the nest of a bird called the vireo. There are lots of different types of vireos who build similar nests and we don't know to this day exactly which vireo we had because we never saw the vireo itself. But we saw signs that a vireo must have at one time visited and tried to at least live on our property because this nest was there. So, uh, it's really cool that you don't always have to see the animal to know that it was there. I also want to just take a second to give you another little tip in case you decide to make a book like this, which if you haven't figured it out yet is what I'm hoping you're going to want to do. Um, it helps if you can go to your library or if you can uh, visit a nature center that might have some of these books or get some of these books of your own. These are books that will help you identify the animals that you've seen. We call them field guides. They're one, another of my favorite kinds of books because I can learn lots about animals that I see but didn't know before I saw them. So some of our favorites are books like The Life Cycles of Butterflies, which um, details the life cycles of 23 common butterflies. And a lot of the early butterflies that we learned, we saw in our yard, didn't know what they were called, and turned to this book, compared our pictures to the images in here, and so figured out what we were seeing. Another book we've really liked is this Beginner Field Guide to Books. It's called What's That Bird? Also, we could compare images that we'd taken or birds we were looking at with the images in this book and so figure out what we were seeing. So field guides can be super helpful if you're trying to make a book like this, particularly if you wanna do what we did, which is name every animal that we found. Hi, I just watched the whole video through and I wanted to sign on and just say a few last little things. So first of all, thank you so much for watching. It was really a blast for me to share this project with you. And I hope that it inspires you to get outside and see who your animal and plant neighbors are. If you do that and you would like to share what you're finding, I would love to hear about it. You can always reach me through my website. I'm gonna throw that um, up at the end of the video. Um, there's email platform there that you can get in touch with me and you can find me on social media. But I really would love to hear what you're doing, what you're finding, what you're seeing. Uh, if you would like to make a book of your own, I put some instructions together. You already know what to do because you've watched this video, but they are gonna show up in a slide in a minute too, as well as a slide of all my books. I hope that if you have some free time, you'll check some of those out as well. So thank you so much again for watching and um, get outside, enjoy yourself. Bye.